I'm going to talk you through a pretty tricky topic now, which is also a bit awkward, but it's worth just getting to grips with it. Ask your teacher at school if you're unsure. It's nothing to be embarrassed about because this is the human body and we do need to know this for the exam. And I'm going to be talking about the menstrual cycle. Right, so what is the whole point of it? We're going to be talking about all the hormones, what goes on, and we're going to be talking about the anatomy of the female reproductive system, which is actually where I'm going to start. So, the female reproductive system, you have two ovaries, and then it joins to the fallopian tubes, which link with the uterus, and then that links at the bottom to the vagina via kind of like a trapdoor called a cervix. The cervix is usually closed, and then obviously it opens when you have a baby. So that's the overview of the reproductive system. Just so you know, the ovary contains the eggs. The eggs get fertilised in the entrance of the fallopian tube, and that fertilisation is when the sperm hits the egg. What's formed automatically is a zygote, which is just a large cell, and what that then does is it implants in the wall of the uterus so that it can then develop into an embryo and then a baby. Um, so that's where the baby will stay implanted for nine months, and it will be fed via the umbilical cord through the, via the placenta, and the mother will provide all the nutrients and oxygen it needs, and in the meantime take away the waste products. So that's a super quick overview of the female reproductive system, and it's definitely worth trying to learn those labels. But we need to know about the menstrual cycle. Being a cycle, it means it starts and finishes, and it happens every single month. Um, for around 28 days is an average length of cycle, but that can obviously vary from woman to woman. Right, so we're going to start by naming some hormones because that's always a good place to start. And I'm going to start with FSH. I always think it's quite good to know what these things actually stand for so you can actually begin to understand what's going on and technically not have to learn as much because if you understand the name, then you can kind of try and work out its role from there. So FSH is follicle stimulating hormone. Now these follicles are basically the eggs inside the ovaries and it's kind of like before they're fully mature. And so by definition, follicle st stimulating hormone kind of means it's the hormone which causes the follicles, the eggs, to mature. So if you're asking the exam the role of the FSH, I would say that it causes the eggs in the ovary to mature. FSH's second job is to stimulate the ovary to produce oestrogen, and that's another very important hormone. But first of all, I'm going to talk about luteinizing hormone, LH. Now, luteinizing hormone is a very important hormone because what its role is, is to cause ovulation. And ovulation is the exact point at which the egg is released from the ovary. So if they ask you what ovulation is, you say the release of an egg from the ovary. What is the role of LH? To cause ovulation. So at that point, the egg pops out and it will travel down the fallopian tube. Next up we need to talk about oestrogen. As I said before, oestrogen is produced by the ovary. Now oestrogen is really important because it causes the uterus lining to build up and it's important that that uterus lining becomes very thick in order to support the egg which, if it gets fertilised, will implant itself. If the uterus lining isn't thick, the zygote will not implant once the egg is fertilised and becomes a zygote, there's something left over called a yellow body, which is called the corpus luteum. And the corpus luteum is really important because it produces the hormone progesterone. Progesterone is essential because it maintains the wall of the uterus. And without progesterone, what would happen is the uterus lining would flake away and that would be a period. So it's really important that at all stages during pregnancy that progesterone levels remain really high. For the first part of the pregnancy, you'll find that the corpus luteum is wholly responsible for producing progesterone. Later on in the pregnancy, it's not big enough, so the placenta takes over that role. It's worth noting that oestrogen also inhibits FSH production. That's really important. Why? Because if you're building up the uterus lining in order for a zygote to implant, the last thing you want is more eggs in the ovary maturing, because basically when a zygote is implanted, there's no way you want another baby to come along, because there can only ever be one baby at a time. So it's important that oestrogen can inhibit the FSH production. Remember that FSH and LH are produced by the pituitary gland, oestrogen is produced by the ovaries, and progesterone is produced first of all by the corpus luteum and second of all by the placenta. It's important that you kind of remember these things as they could very easily ask you this. Have a look at some of the graphs they like to show you, ones like this, to try and understand what's going on in terms of the hormone levels compared with the uterus lining thickness, and it will really help you understand the topic. I know that was quite a short video, but honestly this topic isn't that complicated. You just need to learn the roles of the hormones, where they're produced, and a bit about the female reproductive system. I hope that was helpful. As always, leave comments and a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.